interesting thing about this season is the Cylons have been humanized so much that it's starting to become a, a real dilemma for the first time, I think, that the, the debate is really out there, that maybe the Cylons offer a, a new future, which is a better future. Maybe they're better than us. You're toying with our survival. Look at yourselves. Look, there's millions of twos have that nose. Millions of sixes possess that mouth. Eights share those breasts, and ones have this brain. We're mechanized copies. The thing is, we actually naturally side with the humans, and we, we were led to believe that Cylons are evil, but then through the course, you do find out that the Cylons do have a heart, and they do have a soul, and the humans are totally flawed, but it goes both ways. There's a reason the original programmers clearly felt that it's a mistake for us to contact the final five. No! Violating that programming threatens our survival. They had a, uh, a breakdown of what all the Cylons, their, their specific uh, deal was, which I'd never seen and I was never talked about. So it was a very funny thing to read, to go, oh, that's where I come from and that's what my thing is. And that's how I approach um, the, uh, the things that are happening around me as they happen. They're not ready to trust us. No, I was wrong. We're not ready. We're deceiving them. It's too late. They're committed. Threes, the Deannas, they were boxed after the battle on the algae planet. Boxed? Her entire line was punitively deactivated. Her consciousness placed in a boxing facility. Why? Deanna saw the faces of the final five, which was forbidden. But if we unbox her, she can reveal their identities to us. Oh, I, look, I couldn't, I couldn't say anything about that, eh? Like, they're going to blow the hub. That would be mass murder. Death would be permanent for all of us. They've gone insane. Permanent death. Well, that makes this all the more meaningful. There's a moment when Deanna tries to lure Sharon in by telling her that her child is still alive. Um, and it's such a shock, but at the same time with the with what was happening, because she was trying to break in and steal something for the humans. I think she really saw that as a, um, a way of manipulation, especially she knows the Cylons, she knows the tricks they're up to. We created the Cylons originally, regardless we hadn't seen them for 40 years before this, this initial attack on uh, Caprica, uh, there's still a responsibility. This place is gonna go! Run! We want you to stop lobotomizing the raiders, Cavill. <laughs> raiders? With free will? Not going to happen. It's unbelievable, huh? They look exactly like us, so we have to actually question who we are, why they're not the same as us, why are we fighting them, are we better than they are, are we not? Um, it's all about questioning who we are as humans, and that's true for the audience now, hopefully watching, you know, we, we have to sit back and because one thing we, we do take for granted is that mankind is somehow good and worth preserving. I mean, it's something that very few people question. You know, we're always desperate to save life. Um, why? You know, and it's a question that's never asked. And this show asks it. You know, what's so good about what we do to this planet and our universe um, that we should place as priority number one um, the, you know, the continuation of the human race? And the Cylons ask that question. They say, look, we're better than you. You know, we've, we've come on. Why, why, why do you want to kill us? Why shouldn't we kill you? And that's a question that I think is worth asking. We, the Leovans, the Sharons, gave the Centurions the gift of reason. You have no authority to do this. None. You can't do anything without a vote. No, we can't do anything with one, so we're finished voting. I think the Cylons certainly are that bad. Um, maybe the humans aren't so good. Um, so the idea is that, uh, you know, the goodies do bad things. And the baddies, even myself, have done the right thing on occasion, even if it be for the wrong reason. It's complex. 
think the best thing, the most exciting thing is, is to have always flirt with that balance of who's good, who's not good. Are the Cylons the bad ones? Are the humans the bad ones? Who knows? If everybody's good in their own way, I think discovering the, the best of everybody is what's gonna be fun. It's our ship. When we jump, we take control of it with the Centurions. We carry out the mission as promised, but when we return, we take hostages. On one level, if I was a critic, I could say, listen, she's a robot, she's programmed. It's not necessarily, you know, she's programmed to do that, uh, do what she does. Um, and I, I mean, it's an interesting thing. <laughs> Perhaps number six sees herself as nurturing. I see Baltar sees number six as wholly manipulative. She might be looking after him in a fashion, but only looking after him to make him do something else. I think I'm definitely learning to be at peace with how number six is, you know, developing throughout the, the last stretch. And, and definitely, I think her other incarnations and, and uh, with Natalie and Gina and, and all these these other that are that are kind of coming in and really filling in sort of to me the the plot points of of who my character is and you know the first season was predominantly number six and now i'm kind of a little schizophrenic i think i've brought you this far just to let it end here i need some encouragement a ray of hope about the future an inkling you've got me i'm here for you well, there's no accounting for taste, is there? Being a Cylon, of course, I see everything from the Cylon point of view. <laughs> and it's, it's not so black and white as you may think it is. And it's not so um, <laughs> evil, you know, we're going to do all those kind of things. It really is a lot more... Um, endearing and touching and moving and passionate than I than I'd previously thought. I got curious about Athena, about her and Hera and you. So I accessed her, her memories from her last download. You have her memories. And they're mine now too. If they're as real as my own. Initially I thought Playing Sharon, trying to fit in with the fleet, uh, with Hilo, her experiences there, was much more interesting to play than Boomer, who's had her faith shaken. But upon doing a little more research, I think the more screwed up I could make Boomer, and depending on just how she, how we take it, that could be really, really fun to play. Because on one level, she's getting very disconnected and, um, She's lost faith not in just the humans, but also in the Cylons and of herself. Um, now she has to take care of Hera. Like, she really is, is not in a good space. Do you hate your people so much? Did you look for any excuse to kill one? Or did you deliberately try to sabotage this truce? No, sir, of course not. Having the show pitch that the Cylons are the enemy, you immediately look at them as the other. But then constantly, like, the more you get to know anyone, even um, your, like, your biggest enemy, it's like you can't help but have compassion for them. They call you Athena now. You can wear the uniform like you're one of them. You're the first to say no. No to what? The entire plan. You joined the humans. You had a child. You showed us that we don't have to be slaves to our programming. We wanted the same thing, but it turned out to be a disaster. Four years, I guess, with the miniseries into it, when they say that Saul ties a Cylon, uh, I certainly express my disagreement uh, and unhappiness about it, but the track record of the powers that be, David Fracken Ike and Ron Fracken Moore, uh, it certainly has been paid off for me as the actor, and I'm very honored with what they've been, they have given me to do. You think they're gonna give you a medal when they find out who you are? What about you? What the hell is wrong with you? Nothing, Bill. Never felt better in my life. For Ty, so far, it is like a mental illness. It's, it's like the ringing in the ears and visions, and uh, one 
constantly wondering what's going on. So almost in every scene you do now, it's that thing where you, you know, you're, you're thinking one thing, you're, you're, you know, if you've had a personal tragedy happen to you and then you got to carry on with life, you kind of realize, isn't this amazing that I'm actually talking to people, but this is all going on inside, so. Get that bird in the tube. Get that solo bird in the tube. Come on, mama's not gonna save you today. Let's go. You wanna fly or not? I really didn't like it because I thought you're taking a fan favorite, a character that's very identifiable, very human, um, that the fans really, really like, and you're really marginalizing him and you're taking away all of the, the human stuff. If you wanna humanize the Cylons, the chief, there's no better character to do it. Uh, cause he's the blue collar guy. He's just like, he's a Joe average guy. And, um, you know, a little overweight, not really attractive, but all that sort of stuff. The, the chief has to do some things this year that I, I, when I read them, I just thought, whoa, that's, how do I play this without coming off fundamentally unlikable? Brothers and sisters, this is a great day for us. One of our lost siblings has arrived. She's one of the final five. I saw her in my vision. Now she's come home. I got a little, you know, summary or something that I probably shouldn't have read, but, uh, but I took it home and I read it and I was like freaking out in my room, squealing like a little girl with excitement. Brought you your medication. Oh my God. How did you do that? I came back with Deanna to be with my people. Because you're one of the five. You're one of the final five. I mean, the reason I was so excited about it was because it's like, it's mind boggling to wake up and discover that you are something that you are not. This is crazy. What if I get up there and a switch flips in my head and turns me against my own? Shut up. Come on, like the colonel said, okay? Just think of that. Be the man you want to be until the day you die. The bodies just said they're done, because I don't know what the fuck I am right now. You're Samuel T. Anders. That's all you got to remember. Samuel T. Anders. Don't get the fuck in your ship. Who else would he be? I was dumbstruck, you know, because I was trying to figure out the implications for the character and what the last season and a half that I had appeared, what were the, you know, how do I reconcile my past, my my human side with this newfound identity and doesn't make sense and all those things that I stood for and all those things that I fought for, you know, as, as Anders and, you know, he's a staunch advocate for the resistance. Shoot, Anders! I'm trying to. God, come on. The show deals with such socially potent issues, very existential issues, and I, and I think they're highlighted by the, the, this reveal in the final four, and ultimately the, the fifth Cylon. So you know about the final five? I know they're supposed to know the way to Earth. But you don't know that you're one of them? Your face. Maybe she won't be able to identify us. We have to wait so many yarns for the show to come back. Give us a clue who was the final sign on. Just a clue. What's a yarn? Sorry. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> well, we'd have to lock all the doors and keep all of you here until, but, um... 
I can tell you it's someone you've seen. It's not, it won't be a guest star. It's, it will be somebody that you have, that has graced your television screen on our program before, and that's... And we did have to recast Boxy because, you know, in the first episode, he <laughs> was very young. No, no clues for the final sideline. 